many wireless networks today use some type of portal-based authentication. Either a simple captive portal with a use policy acceptance, or maybe there's an onboarding solution where you're required to put in a username and password and validate that your device is in compliance with everything the solution requires. This could be the right operating system, the right service pack. You may need to have some applications installed or uninstalled. And to do that, there'll be a wall garden. The device is trapped inside the wall garden until it is able to prove that it is compliant. Inside the wall garden, you will have whitelisted all of the URLs to which the client will need to go in order to download any applications or service packs to become compliant. When the device connects to the SSID, the user will be prompted for credentials, either that token or their username and password. If it's the wrong token, or if their username format does not match what's configured, then the device will not be allowed access right there at the beginning. If the username and password match and the username format matches, then the user will be verified against an authentication server. If the username format does not match, maybe they're only allowed access to the guest network. You can have multiple username formats allowed in a captive portal using an onboarding solution. When they're found to be compliant and the authentication matches, they'll be redirected to a configured URL. It can either be just the URL to which the user was originally trying to go or a URL that's configured in your onboarding solution for the captive portal. Portal detection and suppression works with devices that use a captive network assistance service to aid in this process. Devices that do not have that service may have to manually connect to the second SSID after onboarding successfully.